we're going to talk about primitive functions. Now, underneath here, what I want you to do is um, leave a space underneath here, maybe a couple of lines. And then after a couple of lines, I'd like you to write f of x. Okay. In calculus, we've been talking about functions. That's kind of our main object. And we apply the process of differentiation to a function. When you differentiate, when you differentiate, the object that you get out of that ha goes by a couple of different names, at least. What kinds of names would you call it? You differentiate, and the result is the we could call the gradient function, the gradient function. That's why this is useful. I'm going to write that down in a second. Um, we would also call it, like one word, the, starts with a D, the derivative. Right, I'm going to write that down. So we call this the derivative. And in this scheme, we would notate it as F dash. We call it the derivative because it comes from the function that you're interested in, right? So derivatives, or of course, the gradient function, they tell us something about the original function and how it behaves or how it looks like. Okay? Now, it's therefore not that much a stretch of the imagination to imagine, well, what if this function itself was a derivative? You know, maybe this is like a first derivative and this is a second derivative. That means it also came from something before it. Does that make sense? There's like uh, an extra letter. That's why I asked you to put a couple of um, empty things. Now, if you put the arrow up, Right? From f of x, you can get f dash. Right? But where did f of x come from? There's a few different ways to notate this, but the most common way in this scheme is with a capital F. Okay? Uh, you can read this in a couple of different ways. Like this is f dash. This is sometimes called f prime. But the most common name is that it's called the primitive function. Prime primitive, you get the idea. You can see derivative means, OK, what do you get out of this? Primitive means, where did you come from? Like primitive human species and that kind of thing. Okay. Now, in here, what is the process by which we get up to this? Okay. Now, please note, some of you have learnt ahead, and you might think you know what belongs here, what word belongs here. I want to be very careful with this and very deliberate. In this scheme, in this context with the knowledge that we have now, because what we're doing is the opposite of differentiation, the opposite of differentiation, this process is properly named anti-differentiation. As it were, you're undoing the process of differentiation, right? If I were to differentiate f prime, if I were to differentiate the primitive, you would land on this function, the one that we started with, OK? Anti-differentiation is what it's called. We'll come to the other names that that process might get to when it's the right time. Okay? Now here's the weird thing. This is all abstract. Okay? We want some actual examples of what's going on. So in parallel to this, let's just come up with an example, a simple one, like say x squared. Okay? Now we know what happens when we differentiate. If we differentiate this, then of course the derivative of x squared is 2x. All good. Okay. Now, think about this. When you differentiate, what you're doing is you bring the power down and you reduce the power by 1. So being that we're trying to undo this, we're trying to anti-differentiate, if I think about, all right, where did this come from? What was it that got differentiated to become x squared? I have to do the reverse of that. Now, please note, let's actually write this down. Okay. The, the rule that makes this work in our head is bring power down, make it the coefficient, right? And then reduce the power by 1, OK? So when we do this anti-differentiation process, we have to do this exact thing, but everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. So there's a step 1 and step 2. Right? Do you notice when we differentiate, you have to do it in this order. You can't reduce the power first and then bring it down because that's not the derivative. Okay? So I have to do this order differently. So I'm going to do this step first. But I'm also going to do it in reverse. So instead of reducing the power, I'm going to increase the power. All right, so that's the first thing I do. 
I'm going to increase power by one. Okay. And then now I'm coming to this. So instead of bringing the power down, right, which is in a sense multiplying by that power, what am I going to do here? What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing, right? In fact, a better way, it's just so colloquial that we're very comfortable with it, a better way to say bring power down is multiply by the power. Here we're dividing by the power. Does that make sense? Okay, let's do it. The power is currently 2, so when I increase it you're going to get 3. That's the first step. Now I'm going to divide by this new power, which gives me a third. Now, one of my favorite things about this part of mathematics is that it's so easy to confirm, just like solving an equation, did I get it right? Because, of course, if I anti-differentiated correctly, then differentiation should me bring me back to here. Let's just quickly see if it works. Uh, multiply by the power, which gives you 3x cubed on 3. So the 3s will cancel. That's good. And then uh, reduce the power by 1, which comes to 2. Thumbs up. It worked. Okay. Ah, but here's the weird part. And here is why my title and your title has a plural on it. Okay. Functions have derivatives. One function has one derivative and only one. Like, it, this has to be the answer. Right? There's no other derivatives that it could possibly be. But when it comes to primitives, there are actually many other things that we could have started from that when you differentiate will still land you on x squared. Think about this, right? If I had something up here like say x cubed on 3, that stuff is all still the same. And if I had something over here that when I differentiated it didn't add anything or subtract anything, didn't change anything, you'd still end up with x squared, wouldn't you? Well, what might be something else we could have there? Plus 5. Why not? You differentiate that, add 0. No big deal. Or in the same way, I could say x cubed on 3. I could subtract something, right? Subtract anything you like, something weird, right? It's still going to differentiate and come out in the wash. You still will end up with x squared, OK? So what you're creating up here, maybe you want to put this in a, another color or something like that. What I've got up here, and it's, there's, there's many more, right? What I have up here is what we call the family of primitive functions. It's a family. They all share the same DNA. But they can be different. Okay. Now, because I've just got examples here, right? I'd much prefer to actually generalize this a little bit. I can add or subtract any number I like, and it will still be in the family. Okay. So therefore, what we say is, well, if you're adding or subtracting any constant you like, let's just give the constant a name. Constant. Constant. What would be a good letter to denote a constant? Well, it's interesting. I mean, we, we choose sometimes completely nonsensical letters, but whatever. Uh, thankfully, here it makes sense. We use the letter C for the constant. So we would say that everything in this family of primitive functions is of the form, wrong color, is of the form x cubed on 3 plus C. Okay? So that constant can be whatever, anything you want. Let's label that accordingly. Okay. Now, underneath here, uh, and with this, we'll use this example, let's just quickly draw what this might look like. Okay? x cubed on 3. If it was just x cubed, because on 3 is just a, a change of scale, right? what does x cubed look like? How would you describe that? What kind of features does it have that you know about? x cubed has a point of inflection, and it's not just any point of inflection. It's a horizontal point of inflection. So let's go ahead and let's draw it. If I put some coordinates for scale, then that would make it x cubed on 3. Now, what would these guys look like in terms of how they look different to this? Well, the x cubed on 3 plus 5, where's that in relation to this? It's just been shifted vertically. It's been translated. Okay? So I can draw the same thing, just higher, like so. Okay? And that would just be 5 there. What about the other one, x cubed on 3 minus pi? It's the same thing, but lower. Okay? So I'm just going to draw the same thing, but under here. And I guess that would make that negative pi, because that's weird. All right, so why is this whole family going to end up at the same thing? Well, if I were to take any spot, let's see how well I've drawn this. I don't know, maybe quite badly. If I were to take any spot on this curve, 
pick an x value, any x value, x equals 1, for instance. If you have a look at all those spots for x equals 1, here, here, and here, at each of those spots, if my drawing is reasonable, the tangents will all be parallel. Do you agree? If the tangents are all parallel, that means the gradients are the same because they all have the same gradient function. Does this make sense? Doesn't matter how far up or down you are, you're going to get the same gradient. All of these things belong in the same family. Does that make sense? So for now, this is the end of this topic that we know how to differentiate, but we also know how to come, to come back to where did, you, where did this come from, right? What was the primitive that preceded this, okay? If you are ever asked for the primitive function uh, for this, you would say x cubed on 3 plus c. How about, just to make sure you don't get away with my sticky, how about something like this? There we go. Uh, there we go, just for the sake of it. What's this thing going to be? What function did this come from? Well, I know how to differentiate it. To anti-differentiate, I'm going to do everything in reverse. Let's go one at a time. Tell me what's right. 3x to the power of, you've increased the power by 1. And then what do you do with that new power? You've got to divide by that 6, so it's going to end up on the denominator. Yes? So far, so good. All right, this guy. Think, because th this is an x to the 0 term, isn't it? So you're going to increase that power by 1, which gives you x to the power of 1. And then you're going to divide by that new power. right? Of course, I can tidy this up a little bit. This, of course, will be, well, let's see. That's going to give you 2. So x to the 6 on 4 plus 31x. That's only one of the primitives, right? That's one possible primitive. So how do I turn this into the primitive function? This constant, right? Aha. Now, I've covered myself. This could be anything. Does that make sense? Okay.